Let's look at an example of situation number one, where the owner contributes capital of an asset other than cash. So before we do that, let's look at the, an example where the owner does contribute cash. And we've dealt with this a lot. So let's say on May the 3rd, the owner contributed $2,400 cash to the business with receipt one, two, three. Well, we need to put that in the general journal. And we've done this quite a bit. What would happen is we've got more cash. Cash is an asset going up, so that's a debit. And we're giving the business capital. Capital is on his equity, so that's going up, and that's a credit. We would do a narration. We would say contribution of cash by owner, receipt one, two, three. And then we need to post that to the general ledger. So we'd have the cash ledger, we'd do a debit, and the capital ledger, we do a credit, and we just reference each one. So we've done that quite a lot. What we've got to do now is change one thing. Instead of the owner contributing the cash, well, why don't we deal with this situation? Example number two, contribution of an asset other than cash. The owner contributed their personal laptop to the business, which they purchased six months ago for $3,300, including GST, memo one. However, the current fair value is $2,400. So which amount do we use? Well, in our previous video, we said when the owner contributes an asset, we don't use what the owner paid. That's not relevant to today for the business as an entity. We should use this fair value, which is the estimate of the current market value or basically the economic resources left in the asset. So we're going to use $2,400. And then it's actually the same as what we just did. We're going to debit an asset. Instead of cash, we're going to debit laptop and we're going to credit capital. We'll change our narration slightly and say contribution of laptop at fair value by owner, memo one. And then we'll do our posting. So instead of a debit to cash, we'll do a debit to a laptop. And instead of, a, uh, sorry, and actually we'll keep the capital credit just like we did. And we'll just change the reference here. So in the capital ledger, it will say laptop instead of cash. Simple. So if we were just to sort of compare that, there's the two transactions. Well, we had a debit to an asset, in this case, cash. In this case, laptop. That's all we're going to do is change the name of the asset. This entry to the capital account was the same and the narration was the same. We just changed the, obviously the document number. It was a receipt for when we contribute money and it was a memo for when we contribute something that's not money. What we also need to do is figure out, well, what's the effect on the balance sheet of this transaction? So possible exam question where it says, what happens when you record this transaction? Well, we've got a debit to an asset and a credit to owner's equity. So what that means is assets increased, by this case, $2,400. No effect of liabilities, there's nothing there about liabilities. And this credit to capital um, increased owner's equity. And our words balance, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. But then we get that dreaded question, what if it was not recorded? And we just say, well, assets should have gone up, but they didn't because we didn't record it. So this would be understated by $2,400. Now the effect on liabilities would be nothing. We didn't have it go up or down one way or another. So if we didn't record it, it would be no effect. What about with the owner's equity? It should increase by $2,400. So if it doesn't, it's too low, but we just change it and we say understated 2,400. And again, always check that our words balance. Asset understated 2,400 equals liabilities plus owner's equity. So we've got no effect plus understated $2,400 and our words balance.